Have you ever followed information that you thought was correct because it came from a very reputable source? And as it turns out, it wasn't right. That happens. And it happens with this, calcium hypochlorite. And there's some important changes that you need to hear about in this video. Thanks for watching. Hey, Provident Preppers, I'm Jonathan. And I'm Kailin. Today, we are going to talk about calcium hypochlorite and water disinfection. Now, hold on tight because we've got some new information for you. So right. don't, don't leave because you're going to want to hear this. Calcium hypochlorite is a powdered granular form. It's referred to as pool shock, but you've got to make sure what we're talking about is 68% calcium hypochlorite and then the rest of it is just other inert ingredients you've got to be really careful if you're planning on putting in this in your water you've got to make sure you get the right stuff and the reason why calcium hypochlorite is such a good thing is because this is sodium hypochlorite and the sodium hypochlorite is good for water disinfection but this will only stay good on the shelf about six months as it ages the chlorine in it, which is the part of this chemical that will actually disinfect the water, gets right. weaker and weaker. So if this has been on your shelf for a couple of years, don't count on it disinfecting your water. But if you make up fresh batches of calcium hypochlorite, it's a great water disinfection. However, it would not be my first choice. She is very sensitive to chemicals. I am too. However, unless you're doing just really small batches and then you can boil your water, and you have the energy to do that, or you put it out in the sun oven um, and pasteurize, and, and pasteurize it. but those are in small quantities. So if you're needing to disinfect a large amount of water for a large number of people, you kind of don't have any really good choices other than, uh, than doing this. Okay, he makes a good point, but personally, I would disinfect as much water as I possibly could by heat. 212 degrees will kill all of that pathogens that are in your water. It doesn't remove any chemicals, but it kills all the bugs that are in your water. Right. Um, and if I just use the sun in the middle of the day, I can disinfect water. I know they're in smaller containers, but if I'm doing that every day that I can, that would be my preference, yeah. but definitely using chlorine is much better than getting a waterborne illness, but oh, much, um, much better. Yes, much, much better. And, and I agree on the chemicals, However, you got to do what you got to do. So now one of the other things we wanted to talk about is that we have recently adjusted some of the measurements that we have recommended in the past. And I think that's really important with all of our preps as we gain better information, as time passes and we learn more, we've got to be able to say, wait a second, stop. Let's relook at this. Let's revisit it and let's make sure that we're doing the best thing that we can do for our family. So why don't you talk to us a little bit about what's going on, because he's the number guy, he's no, he knows all that stuff. Yes, and so we, we had initially gotten our information from the, the US military, and then we had used that, thinking that that was probably right, and, and maybe it is for them. So maybe. I think it is right for what they're using. They might not be using what we have access right. to. And this is what this we've is been what using. We have access to. And, and then we started realizing that something wasn't quite right because if we take the specific gravity of calcium hypochlorite, it's 2.35 grams per cubic centimeter, which means it's 2.3 times as much as water. So we got looking at this and realized that the recipe that we had been using was not accurate because what happens is this is a small amount of calcium hypochlorite and then a large amount of a really light fluffy material which throws off the specific gravity. So if you take the overall specific gravity of what's in here, it's closer to one, you know, about the same as water, as opposed to the 2.35 that we had originally used. And so that just throws everything completely off. So we had to go back and start over. And uh, our good friend, Jay Wimpy, has put together this article uh, water treatment in disaster situations, and we're going to make this available to you. We'll put this in the description so that you can get this. This has a tremendous amount of great information for disaffecting water. He's a chemical engineer by profession, and so he has done a great job of spelling this out in here. So what this really means to me, because I don't understand any of that, it means that Jay and Jonathan have done a lot of math, and they have decided that I'm not using 
as much as what I should. So let's talk right. a little bit about how I make calcium hypochlorite. This is my jug. I've actually used this for many years, as you can obviously see. It sits on top of my washer because I wanna keep all my stuff rotated. I don't wanna waste anything. And so I actually use this in my laundry to, to disinfect the whites. Now it doesn't whiten and brighten like this. If you're really after that nice white bright thing, you're gonna wanna do the regular Clorox, but this works for me. So I've changed it so that I have both the regular military standard recipe here and I have Jay's recipe. Jay's actually is for 6%, but the one that I have traditionally used is 5%. Most of these, well, are 6%, except for the, like the concentrated, I think it's seven something percent. That would be a number thing. And, and that matters when you're disinfecting your water, right? You've gotta know what it is that you're using. So that's another point I should bring up. You are responsible to do your own research. Don't believe anything crazy YouTubers say because we could be wrong. We've been wrong. This is evidence of the fact that you should do some of your own research. And as I said, as I'm looking out on this morning, looking out on the internet, there are values all over the place mm -hmm. uh, saying that calcium hypochlorite is 1.16. Most say 2.35, but you know, if you get the wrong information, it makes a huge difference. So in this document, Jay has gone through and you can plug in your own information. If you're, if you're dealing with 65% instead of 68, although that wouldn't make a huge difference, his little formula lets you plug in, you know, what percent uh, concentration you want and what your product that you're using is. So it's a kind of a one-stop covers all equation in here. Except I can't do that kind of math. So what I can do is I can look at this jug and I could say, okay, I need to make a fresh batch and for four cups of water, I'm gonna put in two tablespoons of ca dry calcium hypochlorite with the old method, but with Jay's revised, it's six tablespoons of calcium hypochlorite. So it's like three times the amount of what we were using. It makes a difference. So with calcium hypochlorite, what you're doing is you're making a stock solution that's going to be like the bleach. You don't drink this directly at all. What you do is go off of a little chart, the one that we put on this label for the bottles. You can go to, I'll leave a link to the post, and I've made this label that you can just, it's a PDF, you can print off, you can put it on your bottles. I went ahead and left both Jay's recommendation and the recommendation from the US military so that you have both of them. And then it also has what the Red Cross recommends. So the number of drops that you should put in a quart of water to disinfect it. So on this label, it shows the Red Cross recommendation is for a quart of water, you're gonna just put two drops of the solution in it. You're going to just let it set, right? You're gonna mix it a little bit, let it set for half an hour. You should still be able to smell a little bit of chlorine. And as long as you can do that, then after 30 minutes, that water, it should have killed all the bad bugs and you should be able to drink it. If you can't still smell chlorine, put two more drops in and wait additional time so that a total of four drops, I wouldn't exceed the four drops in a quart of water, but you know, this stuff isn't good for you. Like it can make you sick. The reason why we're doing it is because the bugs in the water can make us a whole lot sicker. And, and one other thing we need to point out is this isn't going to take care of cryptosporidium or um, protozoas. protozoas. Yeah. Filtration is still, and th those are big critters. So, you know, one micron filter will actually pull all those out and then you can disinfect to get the, the viruses and the bacterias. And the reason for that is that the cryptosporidium and well, the protozoas, they have a harder outside shell that resists deactivation. And so this potentially could deactivate it, but it could take a very long time, like weeks. We don't wanna mess with those. So filtration along with chlorine. And that's one of the reasons why it's nice to have a water filter that not only you know filters it, but has a charcoal aspect to it because that will filter out the chlorine and make your water taste better. So the filter that you use matters too. And while we're talking about this, we should talk about the safety. Calcium hypochlorite is dangerous stuff. It will corrode metal like crazy. So I have here, this is a plastic lid on it. And this is the watertight plastic lid. Originally, I had been using just the regular plastic lids, but they seem to let too much of the um, vapors out, right? The gases. 
The glass is great because it will contain it, but if you put metal on top here, it'll totally rust through your metal lid. And then what we'd done is we'd taken the jar and we'd put it inside of this Mylar bag. It's just a black Mylar bag, but I mean, the, you can tell in here, we've got some of the silver too. And then we sealed it up and then we put it in a plastic bucket. And between the three of those, it seems to do a good enough job that I can, when I walk into a room where the bucket is, like if it's in our storage room, I can't smell the chlorine. But if you just store it in this bag, you will smell the chlorine off gassing. And you don't want that because anywhere that that chlorine is off gassing, it's doing damage, especially to the metal. Now, another thing that we need to mention here is, remember we talked about the calcium hypochlorite is just a small portion of that. And then there's all this really, really, I mean, really light fluffy stuff. And so we normally keep this bottle on our washer. The vibration, it occurred to me that because of that huge difference in their weights, if you don't stir this before you use it, you know, just kind of roll it around and get it back to where it's uniform, all that calcium hypochlorite is going to be on the bottom and all the fluffy stuff that does nothing is on top. So you need to make sure that each time you use that, you just agitate that to get that all uniform again. And I wouldn't be stirring no, it because you're no. going to have all that, those gases. Keep the I lid on tight and just, just, just... You can tell, I mean, it's pretty free flowing. And if it's not free flowing, there, there's a problem. I only use the, keep the one that I'm currently using on top of the washer. And so far we haven't had any problems with corrosion when it's like that, but I would be super careful. And super, super careful what you choose to do. And certainly you need to keep this away from children. This is a very dangerous chemical. If it weren't for its value, I would say it's not worth the risk, but this has tremendous value. This bottle will disinfect 10,000 gallons of water. So Well, it will according to the old math, but the new math that you and Jay came up with, it's not 10,000 gallons Well, it's, it's pretty close. Jay says it's still pretty close to the 10,000 gallons. So um, it is an important tool. It's a valuable tool, but we have to treat it right and we have to understand how to use it. It's powerful. It's like fire. Fire can be a prepper's best friend, but it can also be a prepper's worst enemy. You have to learn how to manage it, how to use it appropriately so that you can harness the power that's in it without doing any damage. And now for the question of the day, what is your plan for disinfecting water? Share with us and thank you for being part of the solution.